will it take for me to learn that it's only in your will I'll ever earn I'll ever earn my life reward the honor to to me life eternal
Scripture this morning comes from Ephesians 6, chapter, verses 1 through 10. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Bond servants, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart, as you would Christ, not by the way of eye service, as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, rendering service with a good will as the Lord and not to man, knowing that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether he is a bond servant or is free or is free. Masters, do the same to them and stop your threatening, knowing that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven and that there is no partiality partiality with him. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Yes, May yes. the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doers of his holy word.
standing for the prayer, please. Would you please prepare your hearts as we approach the throne of grace? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The Lord is our shepherd. The Lord causes us to lie down in green fields. He leadeth us beside the still water. He restoreth our souls. Father, we come this morning, Lord. Thanking you, Lord, for a day that was not promised unto us. For, Father, we could have slept on into eternity. You could have called our names last night. We could have been on the road. But, Lord, we thank you this morning that you woke us with a portion of health and strength, Father. And for this, Lord, we say thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you this morning on the first day of spring that we are not cast out, that we are not fatherless children, that we have a God that hears our cry and knows our needs, Lord. For someone last night wept bitterly, Lord, that parents have been killed, Lord. Father, we thank you, and we ask you that you would take care of little Javion and his brothers whose mother was killed in an accident. Father, we ask that you would give those children comfort, Lord. For, Father, we know that as adults, when the separation occurs, it is difficult. But we know, Lord, that you are able to give them peace. Father, we come this morning, Lord, asking for our shepherd. Father, he has journeyed long. He's endured hardships. He's taken the long way around the mountain that he might proclaim to someone that the Lord is saving the lives of those that are in darkness. Hear ye the Lord and follow in his way. Father, bless Pastor Lewis. And Father, we ask for Reverend Williams, his friend and companion throughout the years, that you would just hug him, Lord that you would touch him, Father, that you would heal his body, Lord. Father, we know that you are able, that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal, and that you hear thou cry. Father, the blood still runs warm in the streets of Birmingham. Our children are cut asunder, Lord. Lord, we know that through depression, the depravity, Lord, they become disenfranchised. But, Lord, we know that you a softly and gently calling, and that your word shall not return unto you void. Lord, gather our children. Keep them safe, Father. And we know that you are willing, able, and will do so. Now, Lord, bless us as a congregation. Give each household whatsoever they stand in need of, be it a spiritual, financial, or whatever blessing they need. Lord, we ask that you keep each family of Bethel and draw them unto you. Now, Lord, as we continue about our day, give us a jubilant worship. Lord, give us the spirit of joy. And, Father, when we've gone the last mile of the way, when the sun is hanging low in the valley, oh, Lord, call us with those gentle words we long to hear. Well done, well done, my faithful servant. Now enter into your rest. Lord, these and a multitude of blessings we ask in your darling Son, Jesus Christ, and under his blood. Amen, amen, amen. Our great God bless you as they come. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Put those hands together.
can deliver. <laughs> Clap your hands. If you've been delivered, Clap your hands. I know somebody in this house been delivered. Clap your hands. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Good morning to Pastor Lewis. Thank you for the opportunity to stand before God's people, to Reverend Williams, to all ministers of the gospel, and all of God's children in this house this morning, and our listening audience. To my husband, I would be remiss not to stand before this congregation and say thank you for your love. Thank you for your support on this journey. It has been a journey. But I'm thankful this morning that God, nobody but God, has allowed this day to be possible. So if you would please allow me just a moment to pause and talk to my father. Father God, this morning I come before you, O oh God, First of all, to thank you for all that you have done. You are a great God. You are a good God. But, oh God, I thank you for this moment, this time, this hour, this morning, Father. And, oh God, I ask that you take me completely out of the picture, God, and you show up, oh God. Take me out of the picture so that your people can see you, O oh God, through me and hear you through me. O oh God, I thank you again. O oh God, the enemy, I declare and decree this day that he is alive. O oh God, nobody know. Nobody know, O oh God, but you, O oh God, about this journey that I've been on, O oh God. You're a good God and you kept me just for this time, oh God, to share with your people, oh God, just how good you are when we trust you, God. It is in the mighty, it is in the powerful name of Jesus that I pray. Nehemiah chapter 2, I will only be reading just the first two verses. Chapter 2, verses 15 and 16, it says, So I went up in the night by the valley and viewed the wall. Then I turned back and entered by the valley gate, and so returned. And the officials did not know where I had gone or what I had done. I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or the others who did the work. The word of God for the people of God this morning. My 
title this morning when you know it's nobody but God. Again, I repeat, when you know it's nobody but God. When you're facing challenges and obstacles in your life, when you know it's nobody but God. In this text, Nehemiah is rising above discouragement. What happens when people are discouraged? Some decide to give up. Others look to place blame. Still others use their discouragement as a slingshot to propel them to new heights. Nehemiah was a member of the last name group. His discouragement was understandable in ancient times. A city without walls was vulnerable to attack. It was a weak city. Jerusalem would not be able to stand proud or even begin to reach its former stature without a wall. Instead of allowing his discouragement to lead to despair, Nehemiah set about on a course of action to correct the problem. After praying, planning, Nehemiah took advantage of his trusted position with the king. When the king asked why Nehemiah seemed disturbed, Nehemiah explained the situation, said a prayer, and boldly asked for everything he would need to take a trip to Jerusalem. Nehemiah was ready with his request so that when the opportunity arose, he knew exactly what, the, what to ask. The king granted the request of his trusted servant, and Nehemiah was on his way. Discouragement can cause depression and inability to act. It can also motivate a person given renewed determination. Like Nehemiah, we can let discouragement cause us to find a way to solve the problem. We can pray, we can plan, and then move ahead knowing that God goes with us. He said that he would not leave us nor forsake us. He will go with us. I know in this house today, there are some nobody but God witnesses in here. But when something happens in our life, we want to know the outcome. We don't want to wait. We don't want it to take all day. We want details. And you're looking at your watch already. You want me to get to my point, don't you? So hurry up and make your point. That goes for every part of our lives, even at a time like this. We want, we want everything in a hurry. You want me to hurry up right now, but I can't do that right now. I have to pause because you'll understand in a little while. When I get there, you'll understand. Even right now, you want the message to speed up, get to my point, and let's go home. Not yet. But when it comes to the things of God, we must go through the process. And while we're going through the process, we must trust God through the process. You can't hurry, God. You just have to wait. We have to trust him and give him time no matter how long it takes. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. I believe that somebody here today dealing with a challenge and you want to know how long it would take your situation to change. You want to know how long will, you, will it take for you to do what you want to do? Notice I said what you want to do. Hold up and stop there. Pump your brakes. Pull the brakes now. What you want to do is not always the way God wants it to be. 
The question to ask ourselves is what we want to do. Is it God got it? Or is it just a good idea? Is it for self-promotion or is it the desire motivated out of genuine concern for something greater than ourselves? These are questions for all of us to consider. In the text, we find a man named Nehemiah that went through some of the very same things but in the process, he recognizes and he comes to understand that despite challenges and obstacles that he would face in the end, it was nobody but God. Nobody but God. Nehemiah remembered the promise made to Moses and God honored his promise in that if they transgressed, they would be scattered abroad among the nations. But if they returned to God, he would bring them together to the chosen place where God set his name, Nehemiah. Is there anybody in this house this morning that's ready to reveal? It's a time for rebuilding now. We've gone through enough. There's nobody but God, and it's time for us to reveal, and it may not be a wall. But what it is and whatever it is, God is able. And when he brings it to pass, it won't be our own strength. It won't be how much money we have or how educated we are. It would be nobody but God. Nobody but God. When we focus on how great God's power is and we'll be able to see our challenges and obstacles from the right perspective and gain confidence that we can handle it with God's help. Keep in mind that God, our creator, knows every detail about what we are going through, and he cares deeply. First Peter 5 and 7, Jesus said, we, come, we, we can come to him and cast all our cares on him because he cares for us. Nehemiah continues in his commitment and his windows of opportunity open. But he had to take a risk. He exercised his faith. We come this far by faith. Leaning and depending on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. God is looking for people that are willing to go against the grain. People who are ready to break out of the box. And we've been in the box long enough. People who are ready to come out of the, the can because the pressure is too tight and you can't move. We should want to be people who are committed enough. Convicted enough courageous enough and crazy enough to trust God. God is much larger than any challenge or obstacle you'll ever face in your life. Trust in God's plan even when it doesn't make sense. There's some miracles in this house. On Sunday, February 20th, 2022, Minister McCree reminded us that this is not the first time. The numbers were not in our favor. Let me say my favor. The numbers were not in my favor. He told us when you fail the test, you got to go and retake the test. Has God delivered you from anything when you were out of options? Minister McCree said when you're out of options, God is still in the plan, regardless of the challenges and obstacles we face. In this year of 2022, get ready for a season of joy. 
miraculous things happen in your life? How many times God got to work a miracle for you to realize that it's nobody but God? God is turning it around and you've been down long enough. You got to tune out the noise and hear from God. Too much noise is going in and not enough hearing from God. If God did it for me or you, I can't wait to see what else God got for me. Don't be jealous of what God doing for someone else. There's a miracle with your name on it. Who's going to get it? Is it you? Is it you? Be patient. Don't give up yet. Don't throw the towel in. He knows what we're going through. Please don't throw the towel in. He knows what he's doing. We must trust our God. What you're going through is preparing you for what God's about to do in your life. Don't get discouraged. Don't quit. God going to give you supernatural power, supernatural ability. Anoint me, God. Help me to do what you call me to do, God. Help me, God, to do what you call me to do. I refuse to stay behind the wall. I refuse to stay in the box. The pressure is too much. I refuse to give up. I'm thankful I'm still here. So I ask anybody in this house if you have anything to celebrate because you're still here, I'm still here. We need to celebrate what God's doing right now in this house. You are reluctant to raise your hand. You don't want anyone to know you're going through. God, thank you, God. Thank God right now for what he's done, done and what he's about to do. All these challenges and obstacles in our way. I must be headed in the right direction. I must be headed in the right direction. I really didn't come in this house to play with church today. I've come to do what God has requested of me today. When I think about the goodness of God, as Reverend Williams would say, my soul, my soul. When I think about the goodness of God, my soul, my soul, my soul, cries hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. I decided that I needed to talk to somebody in this house this morning. The nobody but God people in this house this morning. Some months ago, I got my diagnosis. Going back and forth to the doctor. I got my diagnosis and the diagnosis of cancer. Nobody wants to hear that kind of diagnosis. Nobody want to hear the C word. Yes, that day, my husband was in another area waiting for me to come out. Yes, I was overwhelmed and 
anxiety starts to kick in. But I remembered I cried myself to sleep that night. I can't tell you how many nights my pillow was soaked. But I heard God says, I got this. And I said, I was going to continue to tune out the noise and listen to what my God had to say. And God's word began to come up in my spirit. And I realized, standing here before you today, that I must stand on his word through it all. Then I went to Philippians chapter 4, 6 through 8. What does it mean to be anxious for nothing? Being anxious for nothing means trusting the plan. If you're waiting on my three points, being anxious for nothing means trusting the plan. His purpose and serenity of God. As his kingdom purposes are fulfilled in all manners of circumstance, it means recognizing that all circumstances can be used by God for his glory and his praise. just trying to get someone to understand this morning that we come into this house and we say that we are worshipers and we love the Lord. But when something happens and it's out of our hands and we wonder how are we going to get through this. I wonder if you know that if you put it all in his hands this, this, and that. Just put it all in his hand. Somebody in this house needs to holler this morning. I'm still here. I'm still here, kept by his blood. I'm still here. Somebody needs to holler on this side this morning. I'm still here. Greater the child greater the trial, bigger the blessing. All the anxiety, all the tests. I'm about to step into something huge. Today, I know that God is doing something for a reason, and everything that God does, he prepares us to get us to where he's taken us. But I, 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 I just want you to understand this morning that I just needed to get here today at God's request and my pastor's request. This has been a journey for me, but God does some miraculous things. And going over to that hospital Monday through Friday for treatment. God put me in touch with so many people at St. Vincent's, and one morning, I went in to change into my gown, and, and when you go in, you have to lock your bags up, and 
You come back out, you don't know who else might be in the room, but this particular morning, there was two people of color that was not the same color as I. So when I took my seat, they began to question me and they started to ask questions. How long had I been coming to the Bruno Cancer Center? And how long had I been having treatment? And because they had just started. And, and I tried to answer their questions as God led me to answer them. They wanted to know when you got your diagnosis and who did you talk to and how did, long did it take you? And I, I decided in my life, at one point, I had to set boundaries, what I was going to talk about and what I wasn't going to talk about because I needed to hear from my God. And then one of the ladies asked me, she says, well, how are you getting through this? And I said, trust in God through the process. And by this time, the... The next day, they still had some questions, and by the time the technician comes out to get me, uh, one of the ladies jumped up, Miss Brenda, and she says, don't take her yet. I, I have a gift for her, and she went into her locker, and she had purchased a gift for me on the day before, and she said, I've never met a person like you in all my life. And I said to her, I said, ma'am, I said, wherever I go, I want God to use me for his people. And she said to me, she said, I went home and I told my family about this lady and she was not our color and how she witnessed to us. And, and I said to her, I said, what we have to do is to put aside what color we are and and because his commandments say we must L-O-V-E and we must love one another. And she began to say, ma'am, this gift, I had to get something for you because I had anxiety and I didn't know what to do. She said, you stepped up in this hospital a few days ago and the nurses would come out and they would get you and they would be laughing and you'll be laughing with them. They said, why, Miss Mason, today you don't have on your sneakers and you don't have on your jogging suit today. And I told them I thought today was a day of a change for me today. And, and I got all dressed up in my little pants and I put my little shindy boots on. And they said to me, or the nurse, when she got me back, she said, now hold up, Miss Mason, before we take you for your treatment. She said, we need you to click your boots like Dorothy. So I did that. Then they said, well, Miss Mason, they said, um, we want you to do a cowgirl dance. And see, what happens is that when we, um, in ministry, we think sometimes we're all out of order. And what happens is that we hold back on helping God people get through what they need to get through. And so when they said, Miss Mason, we want you to do a cowgirl dance, so I clicked my boots again, and I went and I did the cowgirl dance, and I had no idea everybody in that area was listening and watching to me as I would witness to them. And, and then by that time, my doctor was coming around the corner. She waited until after my treatment, and she said, Miss Mason, we watch you, and... She said, your name is singing around this center. And she said, you come in here like there's nothing going on and you don't even drop a tear. And she said, you come in with strength and you come in with power. She said, Miss Mason, the question that I have for you, give my nurse just a little time to check you out first. And, and I'm looking and wondering where she's going from here. And so by the time the nurse was looking up and the nurse practitioner was in there taking her notes and the nurse was saying, Miss Mason, she said, you're healing well. And the nurse said, Miss Mason, she said, the doctor is going to talk to you now. And, and I looked at the doctor and the doctor said, Miss Mason, she said that your kind of strength, your walk, it's so obvious. She said, we ask 
if you, my question, we've already discussed it in this room, and we want to know if you'll come a part of our support team here at St. Vincent's. She said, I'm not going to hurry you. She said, because you're still healing. And she said, but we need someone like you. So be careful when we go and where we go, because people are watching. They are watching how we act, what we are doing. Last Thursday, I had another procedure. When I got there on last Thursday, my husband and I checked in at 6 a.m. When I got back to the room for them to give me my gown again, you got to put on these little gowns and for tests and all of these things. Little young girl was on the other side. She was taking her notes and she kept asking me about my birthday, my name. I guess she wanted to know if I was in my right mind or whatever because she asked me so many times. But by that time, the head nurse stepped over and she started telling me, Miss Mason, I'll be putting your oxygen in shortly. And I said, okay, and I nodded my head. And by this time, the head nurse walked over and she started staring at me and she was looking, I'll put your oxygen in shortly. And I was wondering where she was going with her conversation and she said, there's something special about you. I don't know this nurse, and she was someone else of color. And then she said, there's something special about you. And by this time, Miss Belinda was standing there, tears rolling out of her eyes. And, and I said, Miss Belinda, are you okay? And she said, well, my daughter and son is in Denver, Colorado. And she said that my daughter-in-law is having problems getting pregnant. And she said she's had so many miscarriages, and I just want to know, will you pray with me right now? I'm on the bed waiting to be taken to surgery. And this lady asked me to pray with her. So I started declaring and decree from that day forward, she didn't have to be concerned. By the time my husband was taking my bag, and she said, wait a minute, Mr. Mason, I want to put this note in your wife's shoes in her bag and she put her note and she put the date she was expecting an answer. That answer was supposed to come on the 16th and on the 16th I got home and I didn't feel so well and so on Thursday I had another appointment on Thursday but when I got home the spirit said you need to call that number and I called her up and she said I knew you would call and I said, Miss Belinda, I'm sorry, I forgot on the 16th. She said, somehow, I knew you was going to call. She said, guess what? And she said, we got an answer. And I said, what is the answer, Miss Belinda? She said, the doctor said everything is fine, and within 12 weeks, we'll know the rest of the detail. So what well, I'm saying, and I'm telling you all of this, is because we as God children and wherever we go we need to be careful in how we carry ourselves because people are watching us and they want to know if you say you are a minister why you act like that so we got to be careful how we treat one another i'm standing here this morning because god has been so good to me I'm standing here because of his grace and his mercy. I'm standing here because he promised never to leave me nor forsake me. I've been praying and, and I've been getting on my knees up in that little closet in my room. And I asked God to change me. And I'd be walking through the house asking God to change me. I can't ask him to change anybody but me. And why you ask God to change you? Because I want to be more like him. 
Wash me, God, through and through. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out. Take it out, Lord. And then I start listening to songs to encourage my spirit and to lift me as I will walk through the house. And, and then I heard C.C. whining and said, believe for it. So many times you heard me from this pulpit say, I believe. But we must be careful in what we believe in. I believe. And C.C. says, they say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know. They don't know you like we do. There's power. There's power in your name. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. God, we believe for the impossible. We see a miracle. Somebody in this house this morning. There's a miracle over there. There's a miracle here. There's a miracle there. There's a miracle there. I know there's some miracles in this house. And somebody is ashamed to talk about what God has brought you through. It was nobody. Nobody but God. CC said, we heard there's no way out and there's no way through. They haven't seen what she didn't say this in her song, but they haven't seen what our God can do. There's so much power in the name of Jesus. In his name, in his name, in his name, there's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing power. There's deliverance in his name. God, we believe for a miracle. God, we believe for it. We know hope is never lost. God, we believe no matter what, God, you are, you are, you are the way when it seems to be no way. We trust in you, God. You have the final say. Nobody. 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 Nobody but God. I'm not sure. And I don't question, and I'm not asking that question. I'm not sure what you believe in. I believe he's a healer, and I, I know he's going to do it. I know he's going to do it. today and I God that touched me this morning open up my eyes to this brand new day nobody, nobody but God When you're out of options, God steps in. God stepped in when I had a gun to my head. 
young man says, now, I'm not going to bother you. Why are you crying? Ma'am, I'm not going to bother you. After that, after that, I couldn't walk for 11 straight months. Couldn't clothe myself. Couldn't do anything for myself. Oh, God. Oh, God, I didn't forget how much you've already done. So this test that I'm in now, I'm trusting you, God, through the test. Nobody, nobody but God. Nobody, nobody but God. I believe, I believe, I believe. I know there's some nobody but God people in this house this morning. I ask this morning that you continue to trust God with whatever obstacle, whatever challenges that you're faced with. We must continue to pray and keep praying for one another. The world wants us to do different, but I choose to do it God's way. Nobody. He's turning it around. He's turning it around. He's turning it around. We've been down too long. It's time for us to come out. It's time for us to get out of the box. It is time for us to get from behind the wall to in front of the wall. It's time. It is time. It's time. It is time. God bless you. It's my prayer. Father's house is open. It's time. For we realize that nobody but Jesus. If anyone in this room today has just hadn't grabbed the hole, I heard a scripture that said he's standing at the door knocking. And the moment you open up, he'll come in and he'll sup with you. Nobody but Jesus. I'm a testament that there are things mommy and daddy just can't do. There are things that our pastor cannot do. Nobody but Jesus. Don't wait till tomorrow. If you decide to look at the news, you understand tomorrow is not promised. Come unto me, all ye that are laboring, heavy laden, and I'll give you a rest. Yes, yeah. He said, take my yoke for it's easy and the burdens of life. All you got to do is come this way. He's waiting on you. And what I love about Jesus, we ain't got to fix it. We ain't got to dress it. He said, come as you are. He wants you just the way you are. You Minister, they always give us something for free. Today I want to borrow it because he loves you. I just want you to know that he loves you. He said, come on. Amen. So without a doubt, you know that you are saved. Slip your hands in the air. Jesus, you know that you already have Christ in your heart. Jesus, Lift your hands in heaven. Amen. It looks like family. God bless you all. But From you cannot have rest.
Let's thank God this morning for the word. Come on, let's thank him for the word. What a word this morning. And what a testimony. That's what spreading the gospel is all about. Testimony of what God has done for you. And you will be surprised how it will help somebody else. It is so true that when we think of the goodness of God, I don't know about nobody else, but when I think of the goodness of God, and all he done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. At this time, we will have our announcements. That's all right. That's all right. Let's give our youth a hand this morning. Come on. Come on for a job well done. We have two additional announcements. I'm going to ask that Sister Cynthia Cavan will come at this time. That church say amen. Good morning. In order 
to be a good, faithful servant, we must help others. 1 John 3 and 17 says, If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can one love of God be in that person? And we know that every saved person has been given spiritual gifts to be used to help others as a way to demonstrate being that good and faithful servant. So today I am here to acknowledge Sister LaDre Isaac as she is relocating back home to Dallas, Texas. Now, I can say that she has demonstrated the works of a faithful servant. She attended church, Bible study, Sunday school. She became a greeter and a helper. We can say that she became involved and therefore she has evolved. So we send LaDre Isaac back home with a letter from Pastor Lewis and it reads, I am writing on behalf of Isaac, well first of all let me just say this is to her pastor, uh, T.C. Marshall at Bear Street Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. Greetings Pastor Marshall. I am writing on behalf of LaDre Isaac, as she will be returning home to her former church under your pastoral leadership. This certifies that LaDre is a member in good standing at Bethel Baptist Church since 2018. At her request, LaDre would like her membership to be transferred. We affectionately recommend her uniting with Bear Street Baptist Church Fellowship and Congregation. I am delighted to provide you with a few accomplishments of an indelible mark that LaDrea has had, particularly with our greeters and communication ministry slash newsroom. LaDrea leaves a viable ministry where she has grown both personally and spiritually in developing her purpose-driven life. She was afforded opportunities to serve and increase her faith while making a difference in the lives of others as well as activating and igniting her true potential and creative power by seeking higher guidance and wisdom which has been transformative. Your church will be incredibly blessed by her presence and ministry. I am saddened over her departure, but she has explained her reasons, and both I, the team, and the Bethel Nation family have come to terms with this departure. She will always have a place here in our hearts. God has used her in the ministry and allowed her to become a good steward over her talents and gifts through announcements in person and with the help of COVID-19, using technology platforms of the digital medium. I anticipate that she can bring this same type of ministry to you and your congregation. May God bless you and LaDrea as she continues to grow in Christ through ministry of Bear Street Baptist Church, forever committed to his kingdom, Dr. T.L. Lewis, pastor. And we know LaDre could not be here with us today as her movers are there with her or she was expecting them from nine to one um, today. So we send her back with love. And LaDre, I know you are watching. So we do love you and we know this will not be the last time. So long and we'll see you again. Come on, let's give her a hand. Come on, we can do the better than that. Come on, come on, come on. Amen, amen. For a job well done. Let us keep our pastor in prayer and lift it up. Pastor Lewis, we love you. And we're praying for you daily. Come on, Bethel.
All right, let us all stand. Deacon Howell said, we're going to pay no overtime. <laughs> all hearts composed. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. I'll lay hands on myself and say, it's in me. To God be the glory and the honor. And the children of God said together, amen, amen, amen. Go in peace. Hello, Principal. Hello.